Hi, it's Megan. So I am starting this video with an almost bare face. So I've put my lotion on, my sunscreen, and then I put a little bit of a BB cream on. I put Dr. Jart's BB cream and a little bit of concealer. And normally for a video I use foundation. I don't use a BB cream, but this is really the look that I'm going to be wearing today. Um, so I just I didn't want to wear a concealer today. It's Sunday. And the reason for that is that in real life, I don't think there's that much of a difference in how kind of good you look between a BB cream a lot of times and a foundation, personally. But on camera, it's like night and day. So I'm not going to look quite as flawless as maybe my skin sometimes can look when I pile on the foundation and everything. Just go with it if you're okay with that, please. Um, so what I have learned, I've learned a lot over the past year, but about a year ago I was doing my, you know, nude look thing, professional for business with that really muted eye shadow, brown based, you know, the whole thing. And I kind of went, wandered into Macy's Union Square and ended up at the Inglot counter. And someone showed me at that counter how mixing in just a little bit of red eyeshadow with my nude look all of a sudden made my whole face come alive. And I had never really thought about it before, but browns can sometimes look really quite muddy on me. And then yesterday I was at IMATS and someone was very kind enough, like a major pro, was kind enough to show me kind of some of the tricks of mixing colors together and making browns less muddy, making grays a little bit more eye-opening, you know, all of that, which is really fun. And so that was Alphonse Weebelt from Muse Beauty, Beauty Dot Pro. And that was where I bought the two new Vizart palettes, the number eight editorial brights and number seven, the cool mattes, which are going to be out pretty quickly. And they're going to be on the Muse site first. So these are them. So what I wanted to do was just do a tutorial where I did a little bit of color mixing and showed how to take like a really neutral matte color, mix in some other things. I'm starting with kind of a brownish one, but mixing in some purples and some pinks. And just all of a sudden look natural, like wearing that new look, but just better. And um, so I'm going to kind of go through a really quick, this is actually what I'm going to wear today. And I actually was playing with this yesterday. So it's actually what I wore yesterday. So first, um, so we've got kind of the base. Most of the color has been taken out of my face. And I'm going to do a little bit of bronzer, and I'm kind of rethinking this step. So if anyone has thoughts, I'd love to hear. Um, I just have been wearing bronzer mostly my whole life. So I was about 16. It was like the one thing I always wore. And so I've always done this little three thing. Um, I'm going to try to get my hair out of the way. I probably should have pulled my hair off, huh? Oh, well, bronzer in the hair. It's just the way it goes. And everything won't probably be perfectly flawlessly blended on camera, but that's okay. I blend after. And part of the reason for that is that I've got so much skincare on under my BB cream. It's just going to take a little bit more blending. And then I do a little bit of the bronzer on the neck only because I put sunscreen on my face and my neck. And the neck also gets less sun. And I don't always have it or remember on my chest because it just depends what I'm wearing that day. And I live in Southern California so I do tend to have some unevenness. And so I just use the bronzer a lot on the neck to even out my skin. The next one I'm going to use is a MAC blush in Prism. And this is one of those, I don't know, nude-ish kind of blushes that I really like. But this one's got a little bit more of like a flesh warmth to it. And I've been putting my blush a little bit lower recently. So one really pretty trick is to take a blush like this and just, you know, I do it kind of in a circle. I'm kind of in between the dotting on the the apples of the eye and that old streak that we used to do. So I kind of do a streak in a circle. One thing that's really pretty, which I'm not going to do because I'm going to do a highlighter, um, but one thing that's really pretty is then dotting like a color here, right on the dot of your cheeks, the apple, that's a little bit of a contrast, like a brighter pink or orange or peach or whatever, just to match whatever blush you're using. So we just put a little bit of blush. Then one of my favorite products, the Smashbox Brow to Go. Brow tech to go. I don't color my eyebrows and I don't pluck my eyebrows anymore except occasionally I go insane. I just decided that my eyebrows are pretty dark and I like the shape that they grow in and they kind of grow almost almost in a in a shape. I just like them better unplucked. 
But what I do try to do is just brush them into a little bit of order. Because sometimes when I wake up, they're all over the place. Then, yesterday, this very, very kind, amazing pro showed me using a brush kind of like this. His brush was a little bit bigger, so I need to find one that's a little bit bigger. But this was the closest I could duplicate. And, um... So I'm going to take the two palettes, and this is the cool mattes. I'm going to actually use this really light shade right here. Um, these, this one and this one are really great kind of brow shades. They're that light, but I was just playing with it yesterday, and I kind of like the effect that I got using it as um, something on the lid, and so I'm going to do that again. And then I'm also going to use this bright pink. So the trick that I was taught yesterday, and I'm so grateful, so thank you, take the brush, dot it on there, and the way he described it, Alphonse described it was as a sandwich concept. Dot it in the pink like this, I'm probably going to have to dot it, well no, it's actually taking color, I can see it, um, and then dot it one more time. And then you have to be careful, obviously, on both lids to kind of duplicate that. But then I took this shade, and so what it's done is it's taken a really, really light nudish brown. I'm going to need to do it twice, I didn't pick up that much pigment because I was trying not to make a mess on camera. So what it's done is taken a really light, softer brown, and it's added a lot of rosiness to it. And it's a super natural shade. And it just makes for some warmth in that brown. It's a cool tone brown, which I can wear, I can pull off, but by adding in just that little bit of rosiness to it, I just was like, wow, it's so much more flattering. Because I was actually playing with the original to see how dark it was on my lid. That was how this all started. Put a little too much pink in that one. You can just mix in the brown and kind of just look at it. I'm using the smaller mirror so I can see and I'm evening out the tones on both eyes. And so I get this really, really pretty rosy brown. And I actually did this first before I did the under brow shade. I'm not used to, just because I'm not used to using this kind of a brush and I haven't gotten the ideal brush. This was the closest I had, but I will. Um, and then, now, I'm going to take just a softer brush. So the reason why I like these Vizart shadows is because they go where you want them to go, which a lot of shadows, I've just come to realize, don't. You have to be so careful with them because they're powdery and they go all over. So I'm taking this white, which is actually not a full white, and I'm putting it right under here. It has like a little bit of a rosy undertone to it, which softens it up. This is where I guess pro makeup sometimes matters, or makeup marketed at pros matters. Uh, it makes it just a little bit less harsh than just plain white. And I love plain white, by the way. It's one of my favorite shades um, because I can mix it in with so many other colors and just really lighten them and make for kind of a seamless transition between colors. I just really like that ability. But it can be a hard color to work with, too. So anyway, that's what I did. Then I took this shade right here, which is like a plum, and I'm actually using the same brush, which I normally would not do since we're, this is a blending brush since I've never used this type of brush before. It's one of those that's been sitting there. And then I just did a soft, you can hear my son in the background. He's, uh, on my cats. And I just did have a, and you can see this plum is a really deep, rich, beautiful shade that applies beautifully. And I like this brush for the corner and that I have really, a really hard time with corners. I find that I just have a hard time getting the eyeshadow to apply in that little corner. It's just kind of the shape of my eye maybe, I don't know. But it's just like there's a little depression there and it's almost like the brush just glides right over it. This brush is dense enough, and the shadows are dense enough too. That's what I like about these Vizart shadows, is that they go, like I said, where you put them, and they're also super pigmented, 
but light. So you kind of don't need to blend as much if that makes sense. Because they're lighter, you can get just this really amazing shade and then not have to blend it away. Because it goes on a little bit more perfectly. But it still has that same rich pigmentation. So I then put the purple into the crease and I went all the way. Because this is a softer, more muted purple, I actually went all the way in. Almost. Which I normally don't do. I like that wider eyed look. But I don't like putting too much here of the darker color. It's just, I don't know, I don't like the way it looks on me. It looks beautiful on other people, but I prefer more the wide eyed look. So first I started with kind of a thicker in the outer part. And now I'm going to take a smaller brush to be more precise. And you could have done it, I could have done it the other way around. Most people probably would have taken this smaller brush first, but it doesn't matter to me. And define it a little bit more underneath and define it a little bit more in the corner. And again, this area right here is where I have the most problems. Now one thing I didn't do, and I'm not going to today either, but I'll just tell you because with anything that has purples or pinks on me, I look a lot better if I take either a small brush, a gel, I don't usually use gel liner, but I learned that one yesterday too. I wish I'd gotten a gel liner and looked at, but I did it. Take a small brush, where's my small brush? I think I left it in the bathroom. Like an eyeliner brush, and then I put in a little bit of black right, tight lining right into the eye lash so that it defines my upper eye or I take a pencil liner and I put uh, right on the upper water line to get that black line. I'm not doing it today just because I really want to have the almost no makeup look but that would give me greater kind of depth and definition of the eyelashes. Actually, hmm, maybe I'll try it. You know, sometimes I change my mind as I'm doing the videos. So anyway, I'm just going to keep defining that. Now that just needs a little bit of blending. I'm a huge finger blender. I've been criticized for that actually in some of these videos. And it's like, well, you know, that's what I like to do. Um, I'm going to take the white now. I'm just going to put a little right in my inner corner. Just because, I don't know, I always, this is kind of my little obsession. I like to line the full eye, but I don't like to line the full eye with a lot of color. It just doesn't work on me. Then, uh, we're not done yet, um, I am going to take this Dose of Colors the Tylet Letter in Pearl Dust, which I also got yesterday at iMats. And this I liked just because I've been looking for more cool tones lately, and this is cool tone. I'm going to take the same blush brush and just dot a little bit right here, a little bit right there, a little bit right there. But I'm just really dotting a tiny, tiny amount. And then we're going to take my same little blush brush again, and we're going to take the highlighter, and we're going to put a little bit. I really hate that like super highlighted look in the inner eye, but I like a super, super, super barely highlighted. And that just opens up my eyes. Well, do I get the more tricks I need? Then I have mascara. It's just a Lancome, one of those free ones I got. I do the bottom lash, although I'm going to do a video pretty soon with just the top and a black eyeliner because I'm kind of starting to look at that effect and just liking it. I mean, I think it's, I don't know, almost more dramatic than doing the lower lashes. So again, I'm going for just a light look. But I have a lot of eyelashes, so. Then, this is the Dose of Color Poise Lipstick. And again, we're going for like the, the everyday natural brown and nude look. So this right here is a nude that has enough color that I think most people won't look washed out. And it doesn't lean too far in one direction of being pink or peach. Because I feel like lately, again, I've found so many peach leaning nudes, but not a lot of pink ones. This one is peach. But not super orange. 
and pink enough that it works with kind of an eye that's got the pink and the purple, but um, kind of evens out instead of making me look too pink. If I had done a black on the eyes, like I said I might, I would not use this lipstick by the way. If I had done that, I would have done something that was a little bit, a little bit more pink toned. But when I don't put the black on my upper eyelash, which I'm not going to do, I just like the way it looks right now, um, I can start looking way too pink. Since I'm in that middle of the kind of cool warm time, there's a cat meowing, there's a kid yelling. Um, I'm in the middle of that spectrum of the cool and the warm. If I go too cool on the eyes, I can't go too cool on the lips too because I just look... Ugh. So if I do something that's a little bit more nudish with kind of the, the peach as opposed to just the pink, uh, I feel like in real life, I don't know, on camera I'm looking and I'm like, oh, I don't know that works, but I wore it yesterday and it worked. I really liked it. So this kind of leans me back into balance. Um, anyway, so that is just my look for today, and it's basically using almost nudes to create a nude-ish everyday look that isn't nude and doesn't make me look tired or muddy or or whatever else, which sometimes the wrong browns and the wrong topes can really do. Anyway, I would appreciate thoughts and comments, suggestions, and please subscribe on YouTube. That really helps.